If you had to describe how you're giving differently from other philanthropists, it sounds like you've given some freedom to your family to kind of make pick and choose. I mean, how would you just say you're doing things differently from the status quo? Yeah, uh, I, I like to think I've given them the freedom because mm -hmm. I've, uh, I've been the source of our family's goodwill. And it's been equally important. My, my wife does a great job in this. She continually reminds them. I remember when they were young, they were like 12, 13 years old. My wife and I had to shoot over to Europe for, for a few days. And she was always concerned that we'd fly together. And she went, I remember her talking to them just before we left. She said, remember, if something ever happens to dad and I, your measure will be what you're able to do for others that are far less privileged than yourself. So don't disappoint me and not pursue that commitment. So uh, you give them the freedom, and I think they, they have a right to that freedom, and, uh, and they'll have choices that's somewhat different than myself, but when they talk about the causes that I mentioned, I'm very proud of those choices. I may approach it somewhat differently, but I, I'm very proud of those choices. So, so the real obligation is to, to, to educate your family to, with your values and, and trying to figure out a way that they can contribute going forward. So do you have, a, was there anything particular that moved you? Do you have a, a story that really moved you, an anecdote, a meeting with a, with a child? Anything in your giving that's Yes, and I think that, uh, my wife and I have, um, many, many years ago, seen a very abused family, very poor, incredibly abused family in Vermont. And that triggered in her a long-term commitment to, 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 to create this, uh, to help create this uh, Vermont campaign to end child hunger, but it went far beyond that. You know, when you're young, you're sort of marching forward with life, not looking too, too, too far as each side, and being aware of issues around the world, because my parents were of very modest means, hardworking, and they were, and through them, I saw the commitment to, 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 to help their family and to somehow participate in the betterment of the less privileged. I, I felt that as a, as a child, but I wasn't focused on it. I was trying to make my own career, I was working hard, I was building, and then you begin to see the, the suffering around you, even, even animal suffering, and my wife's committed to that. You know, uh, I have two or three organizations that she participates in. There's so much suffering in the world. The challenge is to try to make a permanent impact other than providing band-aids with just a little money here and a little money. And that's where I hope an organization like this puts our brains and our experience. We can build businesses, global businesses. We restructure them. We, we buy them and, and, and rebuild them. That's very complicated. This is an issue that's far more worthy once you've achieved the other, that we should take that talent pool and find ways to make permanent impact on, on the lives of people who are just, con I'm continually overwhelmed, I get so frustrated at the amount of suffering of a lot of underprivileged children in particular, animals, human beings, women, it is, uh, it's, uh, sometimes you almost want to give up and say, I, I can't handle it's it. It's almost too much, right, just, yeah. Okay, and, and okay, so I take care, I help this, there's 15 behind it, this year, next year, so do you get overwhelmed, do you give up? But at the end of the day, if you give up, what's the point of that too? So you, you gotta try to figure a way, as Oprah said, to make permanent long-term uh, impact on, on these things, so. Excellent, thank you so much. This My pleasure.